on the P blood group system. And it's also going to include the globocide um, blood group system and globocide blood group collection. So the P blood group system has P1 and PK alone. P1 and PK. So the P1 antigen. Is, um, do y'all know what's special about this? Where it's detected? It's going to be detected in the plasma in hyated cis fluid. And so if you ever get asked a question on it, I would lean more towards. Um, one of these two than, than others. So, so far we've got um, ones that are not codominant alleles is Lewis, and then um, your one that we just did are I's, and then P. And then the strength deteriorates upon storage. So that P1 antigen, um, the strength deteriorates and storage. And now your anti P1, so your antibody for P1. It's going to be an IgM. It's also going to be a cold antibody. You can remember this like penguins, P for penguins. They like the cold. Um, it's enhanced by enzymes. And can be neutralized if needed. And then our anti PK only real special thing about that is it's a high frequency antigen. What does that mean? Actually, I need not anti PK. So if it's high frequency, um, if it's a high frequency antigen, will many people be making the antibody for it? Uh, no. No. So if you, if most of the people have the antigen on their red cells, um, they generally will only make um, antibodies for antigens that they do not exhibit on their cells. So. If um, anything's a high frequency or high incidence antigen, then there's not going to be a whole lot of people making the antibodies for it. And now these are three separate groups. They're kind of confusing, and I think, you know, they're still confusing texts as they go too. But the second one is going to be the globocide group. They're all really similar, but they've separated them. So there's the globocide blood group system. And I'm going to share with y'all um, just a little bit on um, what a globocide is. So a globocide is a type of um, glycosphingolipid with more than one sugar um, as a side chain. Of the ceramide, the sugars are usually a combination of N-acetylgalactosamine, um, D-glucose or D-galactose, and um, it only has one sugar as a side chain. And um, if it only has one sugar as a side chain, it's a cerebroside. 
And so it has a lot to do with the, the similar functions that form the, um, like the ABO antigens. And so in this group is going to be um, the P, just P, not P1. Um, which is also the Donath um, Landsteiner antibody. And I've seen it both ways, but I think that it, um, P is the same as the Donath Landsteiner. So the P antigen is also a high frequency antigen. So will a lot of people be making the antibody? They won't be. So if you have a high frequency antigen, then you won't have a lot of people making an antibody for that. Then we got anti-P, um, which can also be called auto anti-P. An IgG. It's um, the anti P is that donut Landsteiner. Antibody. It's an auto antibody. Um, and it's commonly found in um, PCH, which is proximal cold hemoglobinuria. And so your anti-P will react with P or P1 cell. It also may appear in children after a viral infection. And then that Donald Landsteiner antibody is a biphasic antibody that binds with uh, P1 or P2 cells at low temperatures before complement is activated. Again, I don't think you're going to have to know all that. Um, for your test, it'll be more of the, the more common um, aspects of the, P, of the globocyte blood group system. And then the next one is... Globocide blood group collection. And on the slide, um, I know it includes Luke in the PX2, uh, but when looking it up, um, the best I can find is that it is also the antibody for it is P plus P1 plus PK. So it's kind of like a group of them together. So there's um, Luke is your LKE and PX2 um, your Luke is a high frequency antigen. So 
so you're not going to have a whole lot of people making antibodies for that. And now your anti we P plus P1. Plus PK um, the individual these individuals um, have a null phenotype which me means they lack the antigen it causes in vitro hemolysis And is that in the lab or in the um, body, in vitro? In the lab. In the lab, yep. And the most important one of this, I think, is that it is clinically significant. And of course, I got a picture. Well, maybe if it loads, we'll get a picture. Try sharing it again. Let me try this. I'll share it this way. So your P1 and um, PK and your glow blood group systems, antigen and antibody characteristics, and this is from the PowerPoint. Um, here's the phenotypes of the different ones. And then their antigen characteristics. So P2 lacks P1 antigen but expresses P and PK antigens, and it's the second most common phenotype. Your P1, uh, the red cells express P, P1, and PK antigens. Um, the P1 antigen is not well developed at birth, and that's the most common phenotype. And then your P1K, our red cells express P1 and PK, um, and that's very rare. And P2K, red cells express only PK antigens, very rare. And then your little P is the null phenotype of the system, negative for P1. P and PK antigens. And then um, your possible antibodies for each one. So P1 doesn't have any. P2 can make anti P1. Um, P1K can make anti P. 
P2K can make anti-P and anti-P1. And then little P can make all of them. And then here's your allo antibody characteristics. P2 um, is IgM, room temperature, not clinically significant, with variable reactions with adult cells. Um, your P1K is clinically significant associated with spontaneous abortions. And your P2K, um, you've got your anti-P and anti-P1 characteristics. And then your little P is hemolytic, cl cl hemolytic clinically significant and can be separated into three specificities. So anytime you have something that's clinically significant, that's a little more important. 